Welcome to another video. I'm Dave and today we continue the Python file importer. Last time we established how to execute Python code with an UI element like a button and how to create these different nodes. But that leaves us with a couple of things to do. For one, we have to tell Python how we want to connect the different nodes and then provide the typical parameters you find on them. Let's start by connecting the nodes. First, we need to connect the grid with the wrangle. Since we already created the grid and the wrangle with the create node function and saved the result in variables, we can now use these variables to use further methods that belong to the type of node we created. In this case, we want to set the input of the wrangle and connect the grid to it. The naming here is very intuitive. It's called set input. You provide the index of the input, zero for the first one, and then what you want to connect. Here we can simply provide the variable where we saved the grid in. Directly behind the wrangle, we want to start the loop. So let's rearrange these functions so that we now continue with block begin. But obviously we also need to connect this begin block. So again we use set input and this time we provide the wrangler. Let's ignore the parameters we need to set for the switch node itself. That comes a bit later. But we want to connect the switch node to the copy node. Remember, we will feed our geometry into the switch node. That means the switch goes into the first input of the copy node. That's the geometry to copy. And into the second input, we want to connect the begin block of the loop. And finally, we need to connect the copy node to the end node. With that, we should have all of our nodes connected. So let's check it out what we got so far. Ah, I almost made a mistake here. I forgot to provide the index of the copy node input where I want to connect the block begin. It's supposed to be the second input, that means index 1. And to this point, this looks correct. All the nodes are connected in the way they should be. But now we have to continue with the second part, the parameters. And especially here with the begin and end block, you can see that the block path is still empty. So how can we set these parameters? Now to address a specific parameter of the node's interface, we can use the command palm. To keep this video a bit more compact, we save us the trouble of jumping back and forth to identify all the different parameters that are important in the current setting. For now, just take my word for it. The begin node has two parameters we want to set. The first one is the method. The method is a drop-down box with different options, like fetch feedback or fetch piece or point. These drop-down boxes expect the index of the choice you want to make. In this setting, we want the second option, so index 1. I show you that drop-down in a bit. The second parameter is the block path I showed you before. Here we're going to put in the path to the correct node. So in the block begin, we provide the way to the block end node and we will do the reverse for the block end. The block end also has additional parameters we need to set. For example, the iter method, meaning which method of iteration should be used. Again, we need the second option and the same goes for the method. Another drop down with the same name as the block begin node. Like I said, we need to provide the block path, which will point to the begin node. The block end has an additional parameter called the template path. By default, Houdini fills that as well. So for now, let's just do the same and type in the begin. Let's give it a go and check if our loop is now set up correctly. Hit import and press L for auto layout. There's now a frame around our begin and end node, along with all the nodes contained in it. If we take a closer look at the begin node, we can see that the method is set to the second option of the drop-down menu and the block path is pointing to the end node. The end node, on the other hand, has set its iteration method and the gather method also to the second option and we have the default block path and the piece block path, which are the labels for block path and template block path. So everything worked as intended. But now let's delete all of that once again and go back into our coding. Now it's finally time to bring in those file nodes. That means we get to create a loop in Python. The syntax is a bit different compared to VEX, but the concept stays the same. To create a loop that goes over all of the files that are in the folder, we say for file in folder colon. That will start the loop. Once we are inside the loop, we want to test if the file ends with .bg. Here's a very important difference. 
when working in Python. Python uses indentation to define code blocks instead of the brackets Vex is using. The standard Python indentation uses four spaces, although tabs or any other space will also work, as long as it's consistent. But now we are inside the loop, we grabbed a file that is indeed a BGEO file, and now we want to grab the full path to that file. That means we take the object path we already have and add what is now saved in file. File in this case is filled by the loop with one of the files it found. You can compare this with the for each loop where you provide an integer element to hold one of the point numbers that is saved in an array. At this point we can create the file node that will load one of the individual objects. For each iteration, we will create another file node. And the process is the same as with the other nodes. We call it file node and use the object hue node with the name Python test. And then we want to create the node. And the correct name for file nodes is just file. Then we want to grab that file node and set the parameter file with the path we just put together. Let's take a last look at the code. And of course, I mixed in a typo right here. It's not hue d, it's hue. Hit accept and let's test the import function once again. And as you can see, we now get all of the file nodes pointing to one of the individual files in that directory. Now, the next step would be to take all of these file nodes and connect them to the switch node. So let's do that next. As you might remember, we did that with the function set input. That needed the index which input it should be. And to do that in the loop, we create a counter variable. So i equals zero, and we are going to use that on switch set input i as index. And very important, after that operation, we increase the counter by one. In Python, we can also type in plus equals one for that operation. Now it doesn't matter if we have 10 files or 100 files. So hit accept, press import, and now we get a quite different result. All the nodes are connected and result in a functioning node tree. Let's take a closer look to that switch node. By default, it's set to zero. Let's visualize that and we get the blue box. But now we can change the active input. And when we do that, we get a different file. Perfect. And again, the duration of the video gets a little bit out of hand. So let me summarize what there's left to do. First, we need to tell the switch node that the active input is not a static number, but the current iteration of the loop. Then we wanted to create some random attributes for the files. Basically, VEX coding that is supposed to land here in this attribute wrangle. And we do that in the third and final part. I hope you found this useful and are back for that part. Mm-hmm. <laughs>